Boss, talk to me about the importance of emotional intelligence in the 21st century. Well, it's the most important thing. It's the thing that's not taught in school. It's the thing that I spoke to a teacher and I said, tell me about the EQ levels, sorry? Well, if you don't understand what that is and you're a teacher, we've got a lot of problems. Um, the definition of emotional intelligence is the fact that you're able to listen to the other person, even if you don't agree with them, and add value to the conversation. And to be able to say, right, negativity is okay, criticism is okay, people are entitled to an opinion, but I'm also going to stick with my one as well. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to learn, but I want to say something without being afraid of my own shadow. Why, why do you think females are better at emotional intelligence than males? I mean, that's been proved beyond doubt. Because they're mothers. Okay. Or can be mothers. And it would be nice if they were. And that mothering is a different thing from a fathering. So that's the culture that needs to be um, understood. That's why. Do you think men could learn from women and men and women from men? Because let's be frank, men probably over-index on self-confidence, whilst women are better at, at emotional intelligence. What could each from learn from each other? Well, any man is a putty in a woman's hand if a woman gives the man the compliment. And I've said to women, just give a compliment. Even if you're not 100% believing in it, we remember when we were children for our mothers. And the mother would say, you're great, Chris, you're great broker of brokers, or boss, I'm not sure, but whatever. And that level of confidence is important. Um, you could even go further and talk about it in sexual terms, but that's for another conversation. But I think you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, so what do you think men could do with, with, to, to gain greater emotional intelligence? Which, and, and what's in it for them, in terms of them being business people? Same thing as women. Get out of their own way. Get out, stop fearing, uh, uh, making mistakes risking stop fearing so many things be bold you know say let's let's talk about this in context of an interview when you go for an interview uh, in a property company or any company it's a two-way interview it's not oh I'm desperate for the job the position uh, here's my CV this is it no it must be tell me why I should come and work for you what's so good about you tell me you know what's the advantages you have to sell to me as much as I have to sell to you and this is what's happening that people are not understanding this point do you think more male salesmen you know well, let's be honest we're, we all sell stuff don't we could use could, could learn a lot more on emotional intelligence to sell more product or services well what's happening at the moment is you've got a lot of the social media the videos that are coming to the fore now I've been doing thousands of these so I understand that when you do a video, the idea of the video is not to sell a product. It's not even to sell a service. It's to sell the fact that your personality will give the people the trust and confidence that they are dealing with you and that is the reason that they would want to listen to what you've got to say. So you've almost got to get them to engage with you first. You've got to grab their attention, get them to engage with you so they trust you before you sell them anything. That's the billion billionaire mindset right there. But but if you, to the broker of brokers. But if you look at most of the state agency models, in fact, most, um, um, most people selling services, they try and go from attention to... to to get the business from you know straight away they don't use the engagement and the trust building why are people looking for this shortcut in life because they're told that you've got something approached and there's these sales courses and they talk about the clothes they talk about all of these things i have been a star salesman uh, negotiator deal maker broker in two industries in the stock market where i was number one and in the property industry same thing they called me king of commercial. And why was that? Because I realized that we had to have a relationship. And the most important thing with the client was to say to them, right, <clears throat> you have issues. Some people call them problems. I wouldn't even call them that. Let me help you. Let's work together 
to make this work. And then they trust you because they realize that, they're, that you're on their side. But how, how do you get that trust if you haven't got the business in the first place? It's almost chicken and the egg. You have to believe that in every situation that you approach, your <clears throat> agenda is a good one to make people money. Okay, but, but surely t you must talk about their agenda and what they want in life so, so they learn to listen to you in the first place. Well, you have to be good at what you do. So you have to understand, let's say, uh, the square footage. You have to understand where the market's going. You have to be reading the Financial Times every day. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be interesting and interested. But you have to take them on an experience. This interview, this isn't an interview. This isn't a meeting. This is an experience that we're having between us, right or wrong? It certainly is. I, I'm here because I just wanted to have a ch chat with you. We've, we've known each other for a few years and I thought it would be absolutely fascinating for, for, for my readership and, and people that watch my videos to see a different aspect of, of a different person. Um, you, you know, let's be frank, you're very Marmite. Some people are going to love you, some people are going to hate you. But who ca you don't give a monkey's either way, do you? No, I don't give a damn. I might just take the hat off so you get another look. But that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. I mean, why do you dress up in the hat and the, and the glasses? And the, and because the brand logo, as you can see, is there. I own the trademark for there. It's on there. It's on the business cards. And this is what we're talking about, branding. I believe that everyone should self-brand themselves. Whoever you are out there, self-brand yourself. And if you're a company, embrace the idea. The broker of brokers can help you all on so many levels, um, whether it be training, ambassadoring, deal making, so many things. But we don't want to talk about that. We want you to see from the communication levels between us that we, right now, if I can just say this, in the past you used to have everyone being a specialist. And, oh, you've got to be a specialist. You've got to be a master of your... No. Da Vinci wasn't a specialist. He was a generalist who specialized in certain areas. That, my friends, is the 2020s. And if you engage with the broker of brokers, we'll show you how. Let's talk about that in greater detail in the next, next video, boss, where I think, well, you've said as well, that residential estate agents should seriously also consider looking at the other aspect of property, which is commercial. Should we do that? Yes.